Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit fill your life, complete your life, and give the full joy which the Lord Jesus asked the Father in his prayer. Father, what I want them to have is the same joy that you've given me, the full joy. The full joy of the Lord Jesus is the Holy Spirit. And only those who are born of God can have the full joy of the Holy Spirit. Those who are children of God, those who are generated by the Spirit of God. Very well. I'd like you to know that you would be aware of and let it sink inside of you this teaching that the Lord Jesus teaches and the warning that he gives us which only he could give us no apostle no prophet nobody could speak of the story of Lazarus and the rich man there in Babylon if they were not there, if they hadn't seen what had happened back then, only Jesus, who is God, who was before even coming into the world, he saw all that happened in Babylon. And so he says that you need to have this conscience, that your soul, your soul, my soul, our soul, depends on the spiritual decisions we make in our head, the decision we make in our minds, which is not a matter of feeling, but of intelligent wisdom and faith, intelligent faith. So Jesus said that when the beggar died, when the beggar Lazarus died, he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. It is written here in Luke chapter 16, verse 22. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So he died and was carried away but what was carried away for sure it was the soul because his body was buried he was buried but the soul remained alive your soul remains alive for all eternity it will never die and this this is the point of everything so we have to look after this being that is inside of us that will live throughout eternity whether with God or with the devil, it will live. And it's up to us to make the choice. And this is nice, it's even worth mentioning here, that when God created Lucifer, which became Satan, he was perfect. He was super perfect. He lived in heaven. He was the main angel from heaven. He had everything. He didn't need anything. Absolutely nothing. However, inside of him, there was, there was, we can say, a room which was his own will because God does not remove our free will. God does not force anything to anyone, much less His will. He speaks, He teaches, He guides, and each person makes the decision according to their obedience to the Word of God or not. If the person obeys, they are servants. If they don't obey, then they are not servants. So Lucifer was complete. He was perfect. And he desired 
out of his own free will, he desired to be like God. And this is it. He stopped being full of light to be Satan, the accuser. And these made him, and the third part of the angels that followed him, be thrown out of heaven and came here to the earth. And here on the earth, they work as well. And you who are watching me now, you have to have this understanding. You have free will. God has given you a spirit for you to decide what's best for your life. And if you follow, if your spirit follows the direction of your heart, then you are going to go to hell. But if your spirit, which is your mind, which is your intelligence, your reasoning, if your spirit obeys the word of God, then your soul will be saved because it will submit itself to the will of God and not its own will. So, in the case of Lazarus, who died and was carried by the angels to heaven, he was, I repeat, we said this yesterday, he didn't go to heaven, he didn't go to Abraham's bosom because he was poor and a beggar and had suffered a lot here on earth. Not at all. No way. One thing has nothing to do with the other. You can be poor, a beggar, be suffering a lot, and still go to hell. You can be, on the other hand, extremely rich and go to heaven. It only depends on you making the right decision. The beggar, Lazarus, kept within himself the faith that one day he would be with Abraham alongside God. He had this faith. The same thing that happens with the true Christians nowadays. True Christians carry within themselves this faith that Jesus will return, he will rapture his church, he will come to get them. And if we, if Jesus will not come to get us while we are still alive, then we are going to go meet up with him. So there is no there is no other solution. Either he will come to get us before we die, or we are going to go to the other life to meet him. But this faith, this conviction, is something personal. I cannot give it to you. And no one can do it for you. You have to make the decision yourself. When you are born of the Holy Spirit, Lazarus was not born of the Holy Spirit. Still, he kept his faith. Job also didn't even have knowledge, personal knowledge of God. He had heard of God. Still, he was faithful to God until the end, even though he was tempted to his limit by the devil. Abraham, the same thing. He was not born of God, but God revealed himself to him and he was faithful to the Lord every day of his life. And this has happened with the other prophets as well. But in our time, after the Lord Jesus came into the world and gave his life for us, we keep this conviction inside of us, not only because we know of his story, but because the Holy Spirit that came to replace the Lord Jesus came upon us and made us be born again and made us become children of God, gave us the right to be children of God. Of course, if you are not born of the Spirit, then you don't understand that. You may understand what is written in the Bible, but not have the revelation of it. You may understand it in an intellectual way, but it's still still not be born of the Holy Spirit. Because whoever is born of God, who are the children of God, truly children of God, those who are born from Him. Because if you are not born of Him, how can you be His child? It's not possible. So, 
In order for you to be born of God, you have to be born of the water. You have to die for the world because you cannot have two lives. You have to die for the world. And this happens when the person is baptized in water. And afterwards, then they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and make them new creatures. Then, yes, the person receives the assurance, the conviction that they are children of God. The devil, he has been preaching all over the world that everybody is God's children. That's it. But see, my dear friend, see, pay close attention that the true child of God, the first child of God, the Lord Jesus, that came into this world, the first, the very first attempt of Satan was to put doubt in his filiation with God as a child of God because he said like this there in the desert, if you are a child of God, look at what the devil said to Jesus, if you are a child of God, he said that twice, Twice he said, if you are a child of God, if you are a child of God, then the devil works with this theory to those who are born of God. But those who are born of God are not afraid. They have no doubt. They have no fear. They are not worried. They are not anxious. Those who are truly born of God, they have the Spirit of God inside of them that confirms that, which is something personal. It's not me that will confirm your affiliation with God, or you are a child of God, or you are not a child of God. No, I don't have this ability to judge who is and who isn't. The only ability that I have is to examine myself, and only I can say to you and, and for myself, because when we are born of God, yes, we become His children. As it is written, that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit Himself, confirms, testifies with our spirit, our mind, our intelligence, our intellect, that we are children of God. And when He does not confirm that, then the person has doubts. And if the person is in doubt, it's because they are not a child of God. That's the reality. Either you are or you are not a child of God. It's not because you belong to the universal church, you are a member, you an active member, you give offerings and tithe, you are that kind of person who helps others, you, you do what is good and charity to others. It's not because of that that you are a child of God. Not even because you are a pastor, a female pastor, a bishop, or whoever you are. That's not what makes us children of God. What makes us a child of God is to have been born of God. Just as you, as a mother who gave birth to a child, you can say, oh, this is my child, this is my daughter. Isn't it? Isn't it how it is? So the father and the mother truly know their children. Their children know their parents. Of course, I know some children are brought into this world and the parents, they disappear. The children don't even get to know the parents, but it's another subject. But when a person gives birth to a child, they know it's their child. And a child that is given birth by somebody, they know who the father and the mother is. And so it is in regards to our affiliation towards God. When a person is born of God, they carry within themselves this absolute assurance that they are of God. And there is no demon that can remove this faith from within them. And let alone remove the certainty that Jesus will come to get them. Or that we are going to go to meet Him. This is the reality. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will never die which means we don't die. When a person is born of God, indeed born of God, they never die. They will never die, ever. So, my friend, my dear friend, this faith that we have today, a living faith 
in the Spirit of God that is living and dwells in those who are His children, Lazarus didn't have that. The only reference that Lazarus had was Abraham. Even still, he held on to that Abrahamic faith, and the same happened with the rich man. And we are going to see that tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to speak about the death of the rich man. Why he went to hell, we already spoke about it. But we are going to deal exactly with this subject. Why, why the rich man, as well as, as Lazarus, Lazarus as well as the rich man, why they cried out to Abraham, why they had a relationship with Abraham. Here in this text, it says that the beggar died and was carried by the angels. So the angels conducted the soul of Lazarus to Abraham's bosom, to the exact same place Abraham was, there where he would meet up with God. Now, the rich man we are going to see tomorrow, that he cried out to Abraham as well and called Abraham his father. But Abraham was not his father. Because if he was, then he would have gone to be with Lazarus as well, there in heaven. Therefore, my friend, I spoke about this before yesterday, that there are those who are descendants of Abraham and the children of Abraham. In other words, there are those who are descendants of Jesus, of the Christian faith, and there are those who are children of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to speak more about this tomorrow. But do not forget, do not forget, when we die, or if we don't die, Jesus will come to take us. We are going to go to Him, of course. But if we are not going to go with Him, if He, if he doesn't come to rapture the church, if He, if he doesn't rapture the church, then we are going to go to meet with Him. And this is the faith that I carry, and you certainly do as well, was the same faith of Lazarus. He had faith that one day his life was going to change. This hope, this faith that he kept within himself made him tolerate that terrible situation that he was living in. He did not get desperate. He did not deny his faith. He didn't say, oh, I don't want the church. I don't want Jesus anymore. I don't want God. No. No way. Because if we depart from Jesus, where will we go? Isn't it true? May God be with you, my dear friend. And tomorrow we are going to speak more about this subject because it's like the text says in the book of John that those who received Jesus, to them he gave the right to become children of God, children of God. It's the greatest honor, the greatest glory, the greatest wealth that a human being can have within themselves. And I can say that to you because I consider myself this way. My greatest honor, my greatest glory, my greatest wealth, the greatest thing I have is to be a child of God. And the devil can try whatever he wants, that he will never take that away from me. He doesn't have power for that, okay? God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.